All right, New York Giants fans, this is Tim. This is New York Giants Straight Talk, powered by Online Big Blue LLC. We just finished with the opening episode of New York Giants, Hard Knocks, the offseason. Um, it was interesting to say the least. We, we of course, we're not going to release this video until the morning hour uh, because I want some people at different time zones to, to be able to, to be able to catch it. Also, if you don't have HBO Max, you're going to get it at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, not the, the proverbial 9 o'clock if you have the app with the Max. You know, it, it, it was an interesting episode in regards to the fact, I think in some ways, um, HBO tried to more humanize Joe Shane. Uh, the whole peanut butter and jelly sandwich story in the beginning about how he ate the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches when he was a scout and he still eats them now with his wife. And when he got the job with the Giants, he was driving to the Giants with the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Bah, 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 bah. I know it's entertainment. So you're going to have stories such as that. And, but I think, I think it was more of a chance to put a humanizing, humanizing spin on Joe Shane, make him more of a likable character. Because in some regards, when you watch this, I think my level and faith in Shane has gone down a little bit. And it's it's some of his mannerisms. It's some of the things he says. It's some of the things that he does. Um, it's also in regards to, to a little bit of his smugness in reference to uh, some of the things that he got totally wrong on this episode. Like, he, he misread the running back market completely, not only for Saquon Barkley, but just in general. Um, so I, th I, thought that, I thought that was a little curious as well. And it was weird because there was the point in segment in time where Mara was kind of talking about, you know, Saquon Barkley with Joe Shane. And you could see Joe Shane leaning back and clenching his mouth when he was talking about because Mara was kind of not 100 percent on board about not bringing back Saquon Barkley, which and I find it's interesting because usually when you lean back and you if you if you're into the body language, when you lean back and you clench, that means you're extremely uncomfortable. Uh, and he did certain things with that, Shane. And there was also certain points of times where he he refused to make eye contact with certain people. Um, it was very interesting to watch from the body language perspective. So I, I did find that um, interesting. I did find it interesting that he pretty much made his decision on bringing back Saquon Barkley weeks before this even happened. Or weeks before they allegedly decided not to bring him back. Because you could see the room when they were talking about Barkley and the uh, their, their pro scout director who my wife cracks me up because she goes, you know, can we find some like older people in this room? Why do we look like we have to have a guy that's a YouTuber? Um, but he was actually very succinct about it. He even said, you know, um, are, are, are we willing to make this change? And, and I believe it was the assistant director of personnel also even says, what's going to be our identity if we leave, you know, if Saquon Barkley leaves and Joe Shane immediately goes into Daniel Jones and we have to put the weapons around him and all this, we have to make the series, see if he's the quarterback of the future. If not, then we're going to have to pivot. Jones is going to be here another two years. This year and next year. This season, 2024, 2025. You can bank it because Joe Shane is so blinded in regards to just seeing in this episode with his blinders on about what he was going to do with Saquon Barkley and what he was going to do with J Daniel Jones. And there's really no discussion and there shouldn't be because he's the general manager. But when you have so many people in the room that are kind of, kind of telling you, you know, Hey, listen, you know, maybe we should go this direction, but maybe we should also still look at bringing Barkley back. And you're pretty much well decided. I'm not bringing him back. Even when he had that discussion with Frank Gore um, on the sideline, even Frank Gore, who Joe Shane lit up when he talked to him about his opinion on running backs, basically, you know, Joe Shane's trying to put down Saquon Barkley, and Frank Gore's like, yeah, but he's still a good back. You know, he's still an explosive back at 27 years old. And Shane didn't want to hear it. Shane just kind of, again, Shane, who talked about a minute before how he trusts the opinion of Frank Gore, how he was scouting for the 49ers while he was still playing for the 49ers, you know, about running backs, how he goes to him about running backs, how he went to him about Motor Singletary. But then as many as he talks about Saquon Barkley, it was, yeah, well, no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so it, it, it was kind of weird to watch this internalized version of the Giants. Now, the question is, how honest is this? And I have to say, I, I'm thinking that, you know, they're, they're, they did. I look you not see my notes because I, I took notes. Uh, let's see. I love my one note. Kevin Abrams is an idiot. Uh, that was that was a great that was a great note. He was director of pro sky and one of the guy lacks eye contact. Um, and again, Joe Shane at one point in time talked about the can, the litany of injuries that um, 
Saquon Barkley has and the ACL and this and that and that. But then he kind of talks about it with Daniel Jones, but then he's like, well, you know, we got to give him weapons. we got to do this. Only 60% of the plays that we've had with these guys. we got to do this. We're going to build this. So you're going to take a lot of energy and effort to build a team around a maybe. And I think that's what concerned me a lot about this episode as well. Like I said, he had the concerns about Barkley, but he didn't have the concerns at all about Daniel Jones. I also love it when Kevin Abrams thought that uh, Jacobs out of with the Raiders was better than Saquon Barkley. I thought that was funny uh, because Kevin Abrams is an idiot. And this is why we're continuously in salary cap. Hell, you have to, you have to laugh though. Cause you see Joe Shane light up when he talks about Buffalo, you know, he's very serious. He's clenching. He's very back. He's very, he's trying to be in control of the room. He's talking about giants, but the minute he talks about the Buffalo bills, it, his whole face and his whole demeanor just changes. So I, I do think, you know, and I kind of want to say, hey, Joe, why don't you go back to Buffalo? And I love it because he says there's no shortcuts. Well, we've tried to take a shortcut after what happened last year. And 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 the whole crap with he doesn't even know, Joe Shane, what channel he, like the uh, talk radio is in New York. I don't even know. What, I don't even know what radio station that is. You know, I, I, I have the proverbial phrase for you, Joe. Bullshit. You know exactly what it is because you've been on the fan multitudes of times. So I don't know, again, if that's if you're trying to make yourself look cool, then, again, I'm checking. I'm also checking my notes about this. I just love that Kevin, Mab- Kevin Abrams is, a, is an idiot. And, and I do find it interesting, like I said, they, the Giants seem to have misread the entire running back market because the running back market was more fruitful in day one and two than anything else in this league. And, it, and there was this devaluation of the running back market, what it was going to perceive to be. But then you had guys signed for money. You got guys that got traded. So, I mean, I don't know. It, it, it's, you know, you're never going to get everything right, but that's just that's just the way it is. I just love it again because I wrote twice, Kevin Abrams is an idiot. Um, do I, I – do I – I, I, I said it's interesting because I'm – I see this, and it's only the first episode, but you're kind of getting that behind behind the scenes look. But I, I, I'm seeing things I just don't like with Joe. I really am. I, I'm seeing things that I don't like in reference to how they're evaluating some of this talent, how they're looking at some of the directions of this team. He he's kind of uh, he doesn't have any continuity at times with the sentences because he's like at one point he's saying you know we're not doing this, but we're going to do this, but then he's going to do this anyways, and. From just seeing, like I said, for seeing what we saw, he already made his decision on Barkley. Everyone else in the room was not sold on moving on. Because and then he talks about what are we going to have a twenty-seven year old running back making twelve million dollars? Well, you you paid forty million dollars for a guy that had one average season with three thousand yards and fifteen touchdowns. Of course, everyone's going to come back. Well, don't forget the seven hundred yards, Tim rushing. Okay, well, I'm, I, I, he's not Michael Vick, and I want my quarterback to throw. Um, and then you just discuss. And at one point in time, they had the graphic of, you know, we're going to have Wanda Rubs, we're going to have Darius Slayton, we're going to have running back X. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just interesting. And then the whole, the whole hiring of Shane Bowen, um, that was weird too, a little bit because you, you had Brian Deeble running through the stats, but he also, he, yeah, it was some, those stats were great, but he also missed a lot of the stats that weren't. And you also miss the fact that, you know, you had players in Tennessee who came out after Shane left and the new coordinator come in. Of course, there's a gentleman who we wanted to hire came in and they had interviews. You can go watch this. They stay. The one player said, listen, you know, I like the new guy because we fix things. He goes in. The, he goes in the previous with the previous guys. If something was wrong, we wouldn't fix it. We just wouldn't do it again. We would move on. That doesn't fill me with confidence. And then the fact that he talks about how Shane Bowen is that the things that he needs immediately, you know, is two smart inside linebackers. Now you're going to probably, you're going to say McFadden, but like I said, we don't know about McFadden yet, but you do have, you do have a good player and X. We don't have that X. And he wants to talk about having four strong pass rushers. Well, in this league, it is going to be difficult at times to generate a pass rush with four players, especially when you have a poor secondary. 
I, I, I know in some I wrote an article today on New York Giants Live dot com. I got to give that a give that a plug that talked about, you know, how this was going to be more of a a way to humanize Daniel Jones and humanize the Giants and 100th anniversary. And, and I hope that doesn't continue to go that direction. I hope we actually get some inside look. But what I'm looking at right now is a general manager who is in year three who came into a bad cap situation, but in 2024 in year three actually has made the cap situation worse. And I do not believe he's really improved the talent at all. I think we've lost a lot of talent, even between Xavier McKinney and Saquon Barkley. We've lost talent. We've spent more money. The jury's going to be out on Brian Burns because, like I said, the NFL Network said it best. He had one good season, and the Giants basically overpaid for an eight-sack guy. You know, you have other you have other entities ranking the Giants with the 31st roster. So the roster in year three of this rebuild has not gotten better. And in some ways has gotten worse. And Joe Shane is at is at the helm of this ship. And just watching his body language, watching his demeanor, watching his mannerisms, watching him trying to curse, which I thought was hilarious. Um it just didn't it just didn't fill me with that level of confidence that I would want to have in my general manager who was in year three. You never know. We got four more episodes of this. We're going to have a live stream on Sunday, breaking it all down. Probably we're going to bring in the T Brad. We're going to bring in the James Williams and we're all going to go from there. Um, like I said, we, we got to see what happens. That's all I ever say. We got to see what happens. Kind of go from there. And again, this is Tim. This is your giant straight talk. Powered by online, big blue LLC. I'm a little early there and I'm out of here.